All right, so we got uh, two topics for tonight. Uh, Tom's going to give us an overview of the field day activities. And then Phil's going to give us an overview of the tri-band filter project that he's been working on. So we've got two topics for tonight. Um, but we'll start with like we normally do with our club business. So Jojo, are you able to give us an update on the membership and treasury? Okay, uh, let me share. Oh, hold on. I don't have the file in. Uh, let me pull it up and I will share. Okay. I just downloaded it. Sorry. I, I, I have it printed to make sure. So. You can hold it up to the camera. <laughs> I can share now. Okay. Okay. I think you can see it now. Yes. Yep. Yeah, good. So good evening, uh, it's Jojo KN6HCD uh, presenting the uh, club treasures and membership report for tonight. Uh, I don't know if we have our new members in the Zoom meeting, but they are uh, Jim KN6LPQ, uh, Dennis K6AKL, Donald German KN6PJH, Charles KK6PAS and Mike KD6WTU. So somebody uh, took note of getting free membership uh, when they take their exam at the Carmichael Elks and uh, that's what Donald got uh, for this year. And uh, that's a great change for somebody noticing that and joining the club. Uh, Mike Peterson actually joined this July, but I had a delay with wrapping up my June report. So we have one, two, three, four, five uh, new members added. And that makes a total of 143. And that includes the life and the complementary members. We have 60% uh, uh, ARRL membership. Uh, is anybody new in the Zoom meeting? I don't think so. I didn't see them. We could uh, ask for a brief introduction if they are. Okay, and uh, talking about our financial status, we always get the repeater donation from David and we thank him for that. That Recent income we have is uh, 8428 from membership payments and repeater donation. The total bank balance is 7,982 and 60. And that's a general fund of 5,972.38 and repeater fund of over two grand. So we always get positive uh, gain every month. Okay, moving on to the next section uh, for the recent news. Uh, we had our field day 2021 as uh, the most important recent event. And uh, I think uh, most of that this year uh, did something during field day. So thank you. Uh, we'll, somebody will discuss that better uh, from Tom and uh, Kevin. But uh, mm -hmm. as a membership chair, I would like to throw this questions out to the group, uh, the same questions we asked over and over again. Have you participated in the recent or any field day in the past? And what did you do? Uh, it's nice to aim for something during field day. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll hear the report from those who attended the River City field day in BFW. And how can we make it better next time? And uh, as a field day uh, experience ham, what can we advise to the new hams or new members about it? So we'll delve deeper into that later from a different speaker. And for the fourth item, agenda items, uh, please let the board know 
how you are progressing with your amateur radio hobby. Have you participated in any community radio comps event or learning opportunity? So it's a question I throw out to everyone attending the meeting tonight, because this is a general membership meeting. And whatever you do, I hope you're moving forward with the amateur radio hobby. So I added a few things that might interest you. And this is the number one ongoing uh, club project, the QRP Watt Meter. <clears throat> we have 10 me members who are participating in this. And thank you, Carol, for showing your finished product. And uh, I know you're, you always lead the race in uh, finishing something and making it work. And that inspires a lot of people. <laughs> and uh, the sign up has closed. Members are waiting for parts delivery, or that's the last news I heard about it. Uh, second the update is a few members uh, from River City Arts are close to finishing the 10 week Morse code classes offered by Mike uh, with the Samuel F. Morse Club. And this is, uh, I think, a photo from our sixth session. Uh, there's Wilson in the background and there's Mike uh, right in front. And there's Kevin. Uh, who is also part of the club, who is uh, our batchmate. I think we have two more sessions to go. We'll, we'll be there tomorrow night. Uh, third uh, news to share. Uh, what you can see is our club member, Jesse, and the lady is my XYL, N6MAJ. Her name is Madge. Uh, I visited the his QTH because he had questions about uh, mobile installation and uh, we were able to address that. And uh, look what comes next after uh, a few interactions in the amateur radio field. He surprised me with creating a portable go kit. And this is what he did. He bought the uh, watertight or weatherproof Apache protective case from Harbor Freight. And that costs uh, $40. And then he's got his uh, A2FT2900R. And he put in his FT60. And we, I, I remember we talked about the battery that can power up his uh, station. So I recommended the bio Eno, And he's got that into the go kit as well. And then he bought a diamond antenna. I think that's from HRO. He visited HRO twice, and uh, I'm happy. And then there's his uh, portable antenna mask. Uh, he, he, I remember he asked me a question how he could quickly set up or deploy the antenna and take it down after any portable operation. So I, I, I actually brought a quick setup and take down antenna in the Carmichael Elks, and uh, he's got something like it. Uh, that's great progress for at least one member. Uh, number four item to share is uh, the 2021 Bariani Road Race that's happening with uh, Yolo Ares and Gary Matheson is the president of Yolo Ares. He invited me into this event maybe uh, two years ago, but it was halted by the COVID and now they're resuming normal operation. So I will be one of the corner uh, radio stations. And if anybody else is interested, maybe I can let somebody shadow. Uh, my, my whole family is welcome to attend if they have the opportunity. So it's my first time to participate uh, in a real uh, amateur radio support for a big event. And the last is my favorite picture. So thank you for Jesse capturing this. What I can honestly say is uh, after doing your homework, figuring out what to get for your shack, I can help you in an efficient manner. Today, I was able to uh, uh, finish up an order for uh, XYL who just called for what she needed and she called from San Jose. 
and it was a swift uh, transaction uh, providing her what she needs. I can even send pictures of the actual item that you needed. And when you go to the store, I can open up boxes that you wanted to look into, especially if you're buying it. <laughs> so I'm there two times a week. And those are all the updates. And uh, thank you for your attention. Jojo, KN6HT. Thanks, Jojo. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks for the updates. That's awesome. All right. Uh, Carol, are you able to give us an update on the website and social media for this month? Sure. We'll go ahead and do that. Hi, everyone. This is uh, Carol, K KP4MD. I'm the webmaster for River City Arts. And uh, welcome to our new members. I see at least one there is uh, uh, Charles Ritchie. Hi there, KK6PAS. Uh, um, let's go ahead and share. Let's see. I got the right one here. There, am I coming through on a share? Almost there. Oh, no. okay. That's good. <clears throat> good. First of all, uh, this is a report for the month of June, of course. And uh, I want to wish uh, the River City Arts a very happy birthday because the actual um, founding of um, the River City Arts occurred in July of 1976. So this very month we're celebrating our 45th anniversary. Congratulations to the River City Arts. And there we go. Uh, just a reminder, the, uh, this is a homepage for our website, uh, it's n6na.org, and uh, the information we post on here uh, is of general interest to the, the membership, and uh, uh, we do have a calendar on the uh, page that uh, lists all of our activities, including our net dates and times. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you click, uh, go there now and you click on uh, that link there at the top there, uh, there is a link to a field day photo album. I have a few photos there. If you wish to uh, contribute any photos to add to that, you can just send, out, send them to contact at n6na.org for inclusion. And we will give appropriate uh, credit for those pictures as well. So uh, tomorrow our net is going to be net control uh, Andy, W6AWS, I'll be 10 meter net control. And then of course we'll have the slow scan net tomorrow night at um, nine. Let's see next. Uh, again, this is just a listing of the nets uh, on Wednesdays. And uh, we also have all star and uh, echo link access to the two meter repeater. So you can get on the uh, 8 p.m. Pacific time net uh, uh, by uh, those ways as well. The slow scan that is also live streamed on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. And uh, the DIY radio uh, project is in full swing. The kits have been distributed to uh, most everyone that's participating in the DIY radio group. Thanks to uh, Phil Sittner um, for this and, um, uh, and also Bob Mix, uh, who are the brains behind this. And um, we're going to be following the action very closely uh, with the bill that's uh, I'm sure starting now. We also have a swap page uh, and uh, everyone is welcome to uh, send uh, announcements for things that they want or things that they want to sell or give away. Uh, one of these things, uh, Art, uh, KD6 GBY uh, is offering a 12 volt battery. If anybody would like that, then just contact him. There's his contact information. Uh, as far as the website activity for the month of June, uh, total page views increased from the previous month, we went up to 3,889 during the month of June. And most of the views were on June 7th, uh, which was the date of our meeting, uh, last meeting. The most active pages were the home page, followed by the 10 meter page. Apparently there's a lot of interest in 10 meters because of propagation. Uh, the uh, uh, solar cycle is on the upswing and we're starting to get uh, sporadic E and uh, a lot of skip on 10 meters. So uh, it's a place to go during the daylight hours to work some really far stations. If, uh, of course, technicians can operate there as well, 10 meter sideband. So uh, um, go ahead and enjoy the fun on that. Uh, magnetic loop page always gets some interest as well. That was a project we did several years ago 
and it's still a very popular um, type of antenna to build. Field Day, of course, uh, that page and the uh, Field Day instruction page were very popular as well. Um, most of our um, hits to the website came through Google. They were uh, Google uh, searches uh, brought us 36% of our hits and 28% uh, uh, went direct to our URL and 6 naorg and uh, some other sources as well, like ARRL and uh, Twitter and uh, some other sources as well were minor. And as far as uh, most of the visitors, of course, were from California. Uh, also, the, the other major areas were Texas and Washington State. But of course, we have visitors from all over the world. And you can see those that are the countries shaded in blue. On social media, the YouTube, YouTube channel had 935 views. We have 324 subscribers on the Facebook page has 533 followers. Twitter page has 142 followers and we have a Discord server that now has 20 members. Uh, again, our website is n6na.org. If you would like to send any information or have any questions about the website, please send an email to contact at n6na.org. Also, if you have anything you'd like to direct to any of the officers or board members, you can also send it there and it will be uh, channeled in the right direction, so it will be answered. So uh, that's the end of our uh, report for this month, and thank you. Thanks, Carol. Mm. Uh, all right, uh, was Tom able to join? I didn't see him in the list, unless he's done. Here. Ah, very good, okay, all right. Uh, I'm also wearing you? red, so Carol and I organized uh, color coding. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Joja, I wanted to let you know that I'm a member of the, the uh, the Golden Wheelman bike racing team and they're, they're having events at Land Park on Saturday and Bariani Road Race on Sunday. I'll be working both of them on mm -hmm. Sunday. I'll, I'll be doing the uh, judging the uh, King of the Mountain. We have one little hill. We call it a mountain. And, and so whoever's the first over there, I can announce. So if you can give me your frequency you're operating, I can give you some details as they climb over the mountain and whoever gets to be the first, I'll let you know. Okay, so, sounds good. All right. I will. Thank you. All right. Well, let me try and share field day stuff. That one. And make it big. Uh, which I'm not seeing. View. Oh, I just play. How about play? Play slideshow. Is that seeable? Yep, that's good. Yeah. All right, so this is field day 2021 results and me on the bottom. Let's go to the next page. Uh, this is uh, sort of the post pandemic. We're kind of getting there. Uh, we had uh, an ability this year to both work at um, the VFW site, which we did in 2019. It was our first try there. And we've gotten an idea how to lay things out and we learned more as we did it uh, this year. And then we had some people probably, I know Kevin worked from home and if others work from home, if you would submit your logs to the ARRL for the contest uh, and put it under the club, River City ARC, ARC, um, we have a contest. So if uh, your, uh, your points add up to a sig significant amount, you could win valuable prizes. We'll talk more about those when basically all the results are gonna be submitted deadline is at the end of July. So if you have not submitted your logs and you did work field day, wherever you worked, put it, put it in there under your call sign you worked and uh, include it as the club. And then also, if you would like, if it's a significant amount and you want to win something, which is worth doing, uh, send an email to contact at uh, n6na.org and uh, with, with a, a summary page that, hey, I had this many points and, and you'll be in the contest. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. Over on the right, which is kind of covered up by my, uh, everybody's picture, let me see if I can look at it here, is uh, an idea of how to get a 160 meter antenna up. And uh, if you have two hot air balloons and a, and a guy on a high wire, you could probably get a nice antenna. We had uh, issues getting the, uh, the uh, the 80 meter antenna running, we kind of left that 
well past the start of the uh, event because, well, we don't really use that until the evening. So uh, this was uh, kind of a joke that was going around on the Facebook version of, of Field Day and, and uh, about who operated in a, a large antenna. So this was a, my idea of what the large antenna would look like. Oops. So we tried some new things for Field Day. Uh, it's been a while since we've had the clubs beam up. So we put up the um, a, A4S, I believe, even though, or it's AS4, whatever, um, beam antenna. I, we started on Friday and we found that it was missing some parts. Um, we had to uh, put together a couple of U-bolts that were not quite the right size. So we pounded on it with the hammer and made it fit. And uh, the missing parts uh, for the beam were on the director it was missing uh, two 65 inch pieces on the front. We did not have them, but we used some tubing and uh, tried to wedge the pieces that we did have together and we had a small front director. And we'll talk more about the success of that antenna in a bit as well. Uh, another thing we added was last year we had um, a contest um, online score uh, for everybody that was working from home, we get a view of who, who was working and how they were doing as, as they went along. So it was kind of a real-time uh, scoreboard of what was going on for our club. So we uh, tried to do that this year by using a, uh, a Verizon hotspot. And so we used a Verizon hotspot for our local network at the VFW site. And then we broadcast um, our results to the contest online scoreboard. So anybody that could follow along, and I know Kevin was had it up, so I'm not sure if he followed on, but I did see his score as well, so that worked. Uh, we tried the triplexer, which we're gonna hear more about uh, in a bit, the ability to take a, a single antenna and use it on multiple bands, in this case, tri, so three of them. Uh, we, I purchased a new 80 meter delta loop, and that, the reason it's called a delta loop is you generally make it in a diamond shape so we used the farthest trees we could on the property and, and uh, Phil ran lots of, uh, of uh, uh, tennis balls up in those trees and, and we've, we lashed in some, uh, some rope and we were putting up all our wire antennas and so an 80 meter was new and it was not that successful. Part of the reason was one end in the wind was uh, twisting quite a bit and so it shortened the entire loop by, because one end was uh, twisted over top of each other a few times and it was not that great of a, a match. So it required putting in a tuner and the tuner didn't last. Uh, we uh, tried to operate uh, five stations at once, but we ended up with four stations at once. So we, uh, we bit off more than we could chew, but we tried. Uh, we had, a potluck, so people that were coming and bringing food, uh, if they're a call sign, the uh, post fix starts anywhere from A to M, they brought a salad and the uh, end to Z, they brought a dessert. Sylvie and I brought both because we, we kind of matched both ways. And so, uh, and then for dinner, we did not know the number of people who would turn out at six o'clock. So we ended up ordering pizza and maybe we can upscale if we ever try that again to a better choice of meal but it was okay and we were hungry. Uh, we had a CW station on the same bands as our phones. And I'd say, I, I did not talk with everybody else, but what I thought is that it didn't bother the phone operator or the CW operator too much to be on the same 20 meter band or 40 meter band. So I think that worked. We had a satellite operation by um, one of our new members um, that was Jim Spencer, KN6LPQ, and I wish I'd talked to him more. I was kind of busy as being the uh, field captain, so I was everywhere. Um, I did email him to ask if he was successful. I don't know which particular satellite he was working. He said he was able to get some beaconing offered, but he did not get a, um, a transmission and back. So um, I kind of left that off our score, but uh, we tried a satellite operation. Maybe we can make that a future uh, presentation, um, perhaps if he's interested. Uh, we tried to focus on guest operators. We have not met our club people in quite a while. So I think we had, uh, our, we had four operation stations and I think generally people were logging and using the radio at the same time. So we were kind of short of operators. So anybody that got a chance to come by 
we tried to stick them on a radio because we could use you. So hopefully the people that were never on radios before and got on thought it was fun. I, I thought it was a good focus for the group and, and a teaching experience. Uh, we, again, as I said, use the contest online score.com this year. And I think we can continue in the future. We'll see how that works. We had a lot more wires in the trees. We had six antennas total that I counted of which maybe five were sort of successful. And um, we only had four operators. So you can see that we had more antennas than we actually had radio. So keep that in mind. We can put up a lot more. If, if you want to bring your radio, we can, we can try and accommodate it in the future. So, like Sylvia's, who just said no in the background here. So uh, who helped out? Well, we had, uh, uh, I was the field day captain. So that was me, Tom Cutter, Whiskey 6 Bravo's here. Uh, Marty Gunn, our KM6 MFI was our safety officer. Made sure we had uh, first aid kits, yellow tags, and didn't do something silly. We had uh, almost Sylvia's call sign correct. Sylvia Stork, Kilo, Sylvia 6, Whiskey Tango, Foxtrot. It's more funny to say it that way than to see the way I ended up writing it. So I'll fix that in my uh, editing. Uh, she was trying to, to get everybody that was a visitor to sign in into the sign in sheet and welcome them to the club and, and uh, direct them to things they were interested in. And I tried to meet everybody as well, but I was not as successful. We had uh, 44 people sign the guest book. We may have had people slip through, but I think that's a pretty good amount in that we probably had people there most of the time around eight uh, operating and and whatnot and we had a lot of visitors so I think we had more visitors than uh, than people that wanted to get on the radio so we we uh, forced you on the radio and, and hopefully you liked it if, if you had a chance anyway so we had results um, I was thinking about how to compare it last year we did it remotely mostly so our 2020 field day scores are on there we had uh, 1,795 CUSOs uh, last year. I put in 2019 was the last time we were at this particular site and the first time we were ever at this site. And those totals are on the bottom. We had 338 CUSO totals. So looking up to where we had this year, we had 414 uh, different uh, conversations um, uh, during the entire field day from basically um, uh, 11 a.m. on Saturday to 11 p.m. on uh, 11 a.m. on Sunday. Uh, and uh, you can see what bands were successful. So uh, we measure the bands on HF in meters. So the bands, uh, 80 meters, the really long antenna, really long wire. We had 12 phone contacts, which represented 3%. The, uh, until we kind of burned out the tutor, <laughs> it wasn't that great. Next time I'll pay, I'll do a better job of getting uh, that antenna up. I think each antenna really needs two people to, meet, to make it get up successfully. On 40 meters, uh, we had uh, 92 uh, total contacts and that's 22%. And also uh, 56 of them were phone and 36 were CW. Uh, on 20 meters, CW was killing. We had 225 uh, CW contacts that were logged. 53 were on the phone. So the, that was the big total. 67% of our contacts were on that particular band. 15 meters, uh, we tried to get 15 meters working. We had the, the uh, YP3 set up. It kind of, the wind kind of blew it over and it kind of discouraged the band overall. The radio didn't power up. And uh, so the Ken was, was working that. He was kind of disappointed in that and, and uh, ended up helping others. And, and we didn't really run 15 meters. Maybe Kevin remotely did. So we'll still get some 15 meter totals. Uh, but from the VFW site, we had zero. 10 meters, uh, we had a brief opening. Uh, I did not have an operator for 10 meters though we set it up. It was actually on the beam, uh, the AS4, which we have pictures on a little later. And uh, it represented 7% uh, of the total. And Neil happened to be helping out uh, Bob on 20 meters. And, and I was putting up banners and trying to get the 80 meter antenna up. So uh, we pushed Neil into operating. So while he was there, he got 31 contacts and, and a few others that joined in. Uh, it was a brief, con brief active period on Saturday and they kind of died off and really didn't improve. 
And on Sunday, we had a, I believe Sunday, maybe it was late on Saturday night, uh, Carol KP4MD uh, was hit our go-to station, so we had one two-meter contact. And uh, on the bottom, there's a map of all the states that we did get. If you look on the right, we did not get North Dakota. Uh, that's the big white one in the middle of the country. And uh, um, Mississippi, we did not get. And, and uh, it's also there on the, uh, the N3FJP uh, screen down there of what, what states, we, states we did not get. We got Alaska this year. We missed out on Hawaii. We got Puerto Rico. So you can uh, also check those out on our, our uh, N6NA.org website. It also has the same information. So we're going to do awards. We're going to do the results at the end of July. So get your, uh, your contacts in and, and send them to contact at N6NA.org so we know you're, you did them. We're looking for winners of the most QSOs, most contacts on CW. Most QSOs for digital, so anybody that was using FT8 or some other mode, T RTTY something. Most QSOs voice, that's the, the phone bands. And then most total points overall. So those are gonna be the awards. Uh, you'll find out what you win uh, uh, at the next meeting, I believe. So I, I then scraped some pictures of many people that uh, did participate and we could always use more photos. So if you come by uh, with your cell phone, take pictures. We had uh, our canine, L canine Lucy operating 10 meters on the left here. And uh, the upper picture is uh, one of our field day shirts. Sylvia and I are on that. And then here is uh, on the bottom, uh, Ken's uh, 15 meter YP3 antenna being set up and uh, me in the foreground and, and I'm not sure who, um, and Ken's backs to us. So sorry, Ken, we'll get a, maybe a picture later with you looking the right direction. Here's uh, Bob and Neil setting up 20 meters on another YP3 up front of the uh, gazebo that we used. And there's a nice picture of a solar panel. And then uh, the beam off in the background on the left behind everything and up uh, at the top, Right is Neil with his badge on. I could not find my club badge, so I used a uh, Pacificon badge. And then uh, lower is the uh, the big antenna that, that took uh, five and a half hours to put up, and mostly because we didn't find all the parts on Friday, and then we finished it up on Saturday. It uh, probably took maybe seven hours to get all together. The, the big success of that was it worked on 10 meters, but no other bands. So we used it for 10 meters. And the other success was the, uh, the tower um, that was used was, um, had components that were not working. Uh, Phil ended up manufacturing the parts and it worked really well as a, a tower. So I think we're gonna use those in the future. So when, when we have a big antenna, we certainly will try and use that tower again. Uh, we had uh, some, uh, Young people that got on to uh, operate state, the stations, this was on the 20 meter station, kind of the back view of it and on the left. And that actually gave us some points. That's um, anybody that's uh, less than 18 years old uh, and operates. So we had two there, I believe. So that gave us some points. Up in the upper right, uh, people were trying to hide out. So there's Hank and, uh, and uh, Ken and uh, Ken again, looking the wrong way. And, uh, and Dave, and then Bill, our CW operator in his uh, go box, uh, really nice sedation. He just put it together. I, this is the first time I think he's used it for field day. So uh, that's uh, hit the front side view of it. And uh, somebody got a good picture of him. Jojo. Okay, it was Jojo. Uh, here's Bob with his go box and uh, looking comfortable. And there's back of Hank's head. Sorry, we get the back of people's heads operating on the front. And on the top right is uh, Marty Gunn and he's uh, running 40 meters. I think this is the particular day when things were shutting down on, on Sunday. So we didn't get an active picture. So people have some photos uh, that you would like to submit. Let Carol know by contact at n6na.org that you have some photos and we'll get them up on the website. And then down below is what's left of our food table, I believe on Sunday. 
and that's Brie and, uh, and um, Gert in those pictures with her field day shirt on. And I changed shirts on Sunday, so I, I used uh, uh, my May is Bike Month tie-dye shirt. So that's me operating on 10 meters and not really talking to anybody. It was kind of dead. I think I got two contacts on Sunday. And there's Ken, again, looking away, uh, taking down his uh, flag from his, uh, his antenna that he'd set up. And uh, there's Marty and Gertz and I and K9 Lucy. Uh, we did use uh, emergency power, so we had solar panels and batteries. So here is uh, near near side is the 40 meter uh, solar panel, and the next one you can see uh, in the background that's kind of propped up like a TP is the 10 meter solar panel, and then the back side of back side of the shadow way out way out by the cars out there is uh, the uh, 20 meter solar panel. So I used that to document that we did use emergency power and solar power. So what we learned is uh, we had 44 visitors and, and we probably missed some. I think families, they wrote down their name but didn't write all the members. So um, I think we'll, we'll try and have a greeter in the future and, and try and make sure that everybody gets, set, gets uh, logged, signed in into the uh, clipboard that we had for visitors and, and lets them know what we're doing. And um, we have a sign-in sheet and an information sheet table. Uh, we need simpler antennas to set up because uh, we put up six and it took really to the last minute of the of the start of the event at 11 o'clock and we really didn't have much time to set up the computers. So we were uh, basically 10 minutes over until we had the logging set up. Uh, we can announce uh, for more points uh, our, our field day with some public um, you know, newspaper or some way of, of publicly letting people know that we're there. I think we can get a bigger turnout if we do announce it ahead of time. We really did it at short notice, so we did not get a public uh, um, well, a newspaper or some large uh, broadcast that we were gonna be at the, the VFW site. We do need a welcome person, I believe, for next time uh, to keep, tra keep track of people. We needed more loggers and to people that were, would type the logs. We generally work as a team. So the operator talking on the radio will, will, will do the exchanges that are needed and the logger will keep track of who we worked. And, and that makes it as a better team where one person is doing the typing and one person is talking and then you kind of flip over and do it the other way. So most of us were single operators and loggers. It was complicated. We need more photos. We missed people. I did not get a picture of Phil anywhere. I don't think anybody that I, of the photos I did look at were, were there, but he was actually there, believe it or not, among other people that were, were definitely giving the back of their heads so we couldn't get the front of their heads. And uh, some other ideas, anybody that has comments would like to hear about them. Uh, here's the result page of submitting for our club. We, um, had a claim total for the number of CUSOs. We had 206, uh, let's see, we had 1,352 uh, points claimed for communicating back and forth. And when we had bonus points for using emergency power, a public location, et cetera, et cetera. So with that, another 1,290. So the total score that we ended up coming up with was 2,642, which I think is a pretty large amount. I'll have to compare it to previous years. So that's all I've got. I'd like to, uh, if anybody has immediate questions, uh, bring, bring them, but uh, we'll, we'll spend more time at the end because we have a follow on about the triplexer and that's somewhat related to field day. So does anybody have any questions? And I'll stop sharing or comments. Uh, yeah, I have a comment. First of all, I wanna thank uh, everyone who participated in the field day, but especially to the dedication of Bill, uh, N6EF, uh, doing the CW, he earned the lion's share of the uh, QSO points uh, for the club uh, this field day. So uh, thank you very much for that dedication. Uh, Gert uh, had brought a whole slew of these uh, membership badges of people that have requested them. And uh, if you showed up at field day, you were able to pick one up. Uh, so you're going to have to wait until the next time we get together to get your membership badge. Thank you very much to Gert for uh, putting those membership badges. They were all laid out on the table there. I saw them. And uh, if you are a new member and you haven't uh, 
requested one, go ahead and do that and Gert will get it out. Um, we're not mailing them out, but uh, we can perhaps work at a way that you can pick it up. Uh, maybe we'll have a, an upcoming meeting in person, but that's another topic uh, when the venue becomes open again for our meetings. Okay. Uh, thanks, Carol. I, I can't say that Bill exceeded the CW totals from the previous year when we were all, and that was multiple people working from home. He definitely did. Uh, it's if you look on our webpage, we have last year's uh, total and this year's, and uh, he he did exceed it that I, that I saw. There were a lot of people that just pitched in and helped. I did not list them all, but you were all very useful. I mm -hmm. uh, Jay. Ballinger sh showed for the Aries. We got points for him showing, and he also put him to work helping me put up the 80 meter antenna. So anybody that was there, uh, Ken Cooley was there early at 10 o'clock in the morning. So we weren't quite ready for him. We were still and trying was, to put up And he was helping put up antennas too. He helped uh, save our 15 meter antenna from falling over. For you Ken. know, the other thing about our score, Bill's yeah. score single-handedly was more points than W6SFM scored on CW. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. I was waiting to hear how uh, how our score compared against all of that. Yeah, that job, makes me happy. Bill. Thank I, you. I want to ask you while you're here, how did did you have any interference problems on 20 and 40 with our stations? The only interference I had was copying was from the 40 meter phone station when I was trying to copy the CW message, the ARRL oh, I see. Uh, field sure. day message. It, it, it's closer. Yeah. Yeah, it, it kind of wiped out a small portion of it, and I noted that on the uh, on the transcription that I, I did. But other than that, I didn't hear anybody Yeah, uh, so that, the whole time. I didn't hear any that. interference. I, I was really concerned, and, and I'm glad to... What did you think of that 20-meter wire beam? Uh, if we can have that again next year, that thing rocked. That thing uh, worked really, really well. And it was fairly quiet? Yes, it was fairly quiet. I had maybe an S2 to S5 noise level at times. Uh, and I don't know if that was just uh, from the, the 20 meter phone station, but uh, I could work anything that I heard. And I, I could I hear just about uh, everybody who called me. Wonderful, glad it worked well for you, Bill. Great job. Thank you. All right, well, we'll pass it to Phil and uh, maybe we'll have more questions at the end if we think of something to talk about. I have things that I did want to talk about. I'll, I'll leave them to the end if I still remember. Go ahead. All right, I'll try the share screen thing here. And what I want to do is go here. Oh, cool, it's going to work. Slideshow. slideshow from the beginning. Okay. Um, you know, one of the biggest challenges with field day is, as Tom was saying earlier, was antennas. And so if you can minimize the amount of labor you've got to put into these tasks, life is certainly a lot easier. This is a picture from Pacificon in 2015. On the left is one of these emergency communication bands, their UHF, I'm sure, arrangement. And here is the ham tower. They've got a KT-34A on this big crank up tower. I thought that was pretty cool. It's trailer mounted, that would be an ideal thing for us, but I'm not so sure it's gonna happen. And you can see they've got a wire antenna hung off it too. It looks like an inverted V. So anyway, you go over and you take a look at their station and you see these little boxes. This is all part of a triplexer or maybe even quad, it must be a triplexer system. And these are filters that have a cooling fan on it. Each of these stations I do believe was running 500 watts. So they had one antenna and all of these stations running and everybody seemed to do well. And I thought that was, pretty interesting. So I looked around and lo and behold, DX Engineering sells those things. And I'm sure that Ham Radio Outlet does as well. 
$678 for a triplexer, which is this thing over here, and bandpass filters for 10, 15, and 20. And uh, $678 is a little steep. So I thought I'd dig into it a little further. Lo and behold, in the back of the ARRL handbook, there's a CD-ROM. And in there, they talk about that very concept, the triplexer and international radio, NRAD, the one whose product you saw in that, uh, that um, pictures further back, uh, is the one that builds it. And he goes into details about how these things work. So here's the circuit. There's not much to it. There's a couple of coils and there's three capacitors. This is where the antenna goes. And then you've got the 10 and the 15 and 20. Well, time to experiment. So I drug out a piece of, this is called copper clad board. It's what printed circuit boards are made from. Wound up some little toroids. And then for the capacitors, you might see them here. These are little surface mount capacitors. And then some of them I needed to kind of tune the filter. So they've got these little trimmer capacitors. And lo and behold, after putting that thing together, it works. I thought that's pretty cool. So the next step was I designed some printed circuit boards, sent them out, had them made, and then I ordered some toroids, wound up the toroids, put these things together, and um, that part looked pretty good. But with this, you also have to add some bandpass filters. This allows the three antennas to use, or the three rigs to use the same antenna simultaneously, but there's a lot of bleed through. You're gonna, you know, the guy on 20, for example, is gonna see a lot of 15 meter signal and 10 meter signal. So you need bandpass filters. And so I did a bit more digging. This is a QST article. And in this article, they. They've got a what's called a uh, uh, um, what is it a mesh mesh filter design, and uh, so I got to digging into it, and here is the mesh filter design. This is a, a quadrature wound core that actually raises the input impedance up to 800 ohms, as I note here, which allows you to have tighter control over the bandpass. And the thing that you should note is your little 100 watt signal with these filters, you're dealing with at least a 400 volt signal. Now that's allowing up to a 200 watt rig. So time to build some filters to go with the triplexer. And this is an example of one of them. This happens to be a 20 meter filter. 20 meter filter, you can see that there's three pieces of wire per turn. This is a triplex uh, quadrature, or a, a, a tri-wound core. And these are the series inductors. You'll also note these are silver mica capacitors. These are rated at 500 volts. And then you see this funny looking thing here. These filters are extremely critical to tune and you're not gonna find exactly the value you need. So you start off with a capacitor and these are called gimmick capacitors. As you twist these two pieces of wire together, you actually um, increase the amount of capacitance. So using this technique, I was able to get these uh, filters to perform exactly spot on. Here's the completed mess. Um, you know, are you guys seeing these pictures over here? Yep. Yep. I don't yep. See those. Let me yep, looking uh, good, Phil. Let me suppress them. This is the triplexer. Here's the 10 meter filter. Here's the 15 meter filter. Here's the 20 meter filter. And once those were completed and tested and tuned, it was time to stick them in a box. And there they are in the box. I bought this box down in Silicon Valley at a ham swap. I think I paid a dollar or two for it. And it was just the right size to put these things. This stuff is made out of quarter inch aluminum plate. 
So Woo! even in a field day setting, I think it'll survive. Um, so again, you've got an input connector SO239 here that goes to the triplexer and then there's three pieces of, this is actually Teflon coax that goes to the respective um, uh, band pass filters. So the question is, how did it work? And if you look at this, this is kind of impressive. If you have a 15 meter receiver tied into the antenna and you're putting a hundred watts <clears throat> out on 20 meters, 0. 0.00005 watts gets into that 15 meter rig. You'd never hear it, it's 63 dB of isolation. On 20 meters, again, transmitting, listening on 10, it's even better, 0. 0.00001 watts gets through. 10 meters again listening, 15 meters transmitting, you get two and a half thousandths of a watt through. Uh, 15 meters transmitting, 20 meters receiving, you get one milliwatt through. Oops, I gotta go back. And if you're transmitting on 10 meters and listening on 15, now, Recognize those bands are fairly close in frequency. They're only seven megahertz apart. The suppression, I can find my, 32 dB of isolation. So that's 60 milliwatts it gets through. And that's pretty easily handled by just putting another 15 meter <clears throat> filter on the triplexer. 10 meter transmit, 20 meter receive, it's way down again. It's a 10th of a milliwatt. So that's pretty good performance. And so how did we do compared to $700 worth of DX engineering? I spent $42.40 to have the boards made. I spent $42.40. How those two came out the same, I'll never know, but those are the actual receipts for the, the bare toroids. All those uh, silver mica capacitors, I bought those at a swap meet, and I think I ended up buying five or 10 pounds of them for $20. I mean, it was unbelievably cheap. By the way, silver mica capacitors, if you buy them from DigiKey or one of those guys, they're three and $4 a piece. Yep. And I put down, I paid five bucks for that quarter inch plate box. I don't think it was that much. So the total expenditure was $109.80 to give us a triplexer. Unfortunately, <clears throat> our tri-band beam was a mono band beam. <laughs> so we didn't really get a chance to put it to the test, but there's no doubt in my mind that this thing will work exceptionally well and uh, hopefully we can find it in our budget to buy ourselves uh, a different antenna. I think one of those uh, spider web type things or hex beams is a pretty good way to go. And that constitutes my very best story. Any questions? I'm impressed. Are you gonna mass produce it and sell it through uh, a college? Uh, I don't think so. Like Art Fong's antennas or something. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do with? Yeah, how many hours did you put into uh, building this thing? You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the labor costs come in. Yeah, that would bring the yeah. total value up to $600 right there. <laughs> well, think how much time you spend learning Morse code. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's all about it. But, uh, it, you know, the... There's a lot of things that are easily doable and we have so much information and so many great tools. You know, these little nano uh, VNAs mm -hmm. is what you'd use to measure the performance of something like this. You know, 15 years ago, you, you couldn't do it. You wouldn't be able to align the filters. You wouldn't be able to make the measurements. It'd be an impossible task. Now you spend 50 bucks and you've got instrumentation that allows you to do all sorts of magnificent things. So, um, the nano yeah, VNA. the nano VNA. Projects. 
Yeah. So again, it was uh, it was very interesting, and I think next year, provided we uh, put together a truly operational directional antenna, tri-band antenna, we'll find it to be extremely helpful for our events and save us a tremendous amount of setup time. That's the real purpose is to save the amount of setup time. And I think our little tower is gonna to work pretty well in that regard as well. It yeah. needed a lot of TLC, but it's working good now, so. And we were impressed with the tower. <laughs> the antenna time, I think if we can get an antenna up in an hour, we could probably get everything put together on time, but uh, the beam took more hours than than the success of it. So we had to actually use our backup plans to uh, to get on the air. Can you imagine the mess we'd have had had we not started on Friday? It would not, that would, we'd have to, to drop that project. I, we'd have to make it simpler. Yeah. That, that was one of my notes is to do, to make our antenna setup simpler. It, it was very complicated. Now the wire antennas actually went up pretty well that, uh, that two element 20 meter beam that we put up for our CW operation, that probably took me maybe an hour and, and David in his wheelchair helped me. So that wasn't so bad. And then I put up a 40 meter inverted V for Bill as well. That thing had an SWR of 1.08 to one at 7045. It doesn't get much better than that. And apparently that worked pretty well. So the wire antennas that I put up uh, uh, in support of the CW operation, they weren't too lengthy an endeavor. You also put up uh, some uh, ropes for the 80 yeah, meter. Yeah, I put antenna. up ropes for you and did I do it for somebody else? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think that was it. However, but, the, you know, that... we've got some other 40 meter options, you know, for several years. Uh, we had a 40 meter full wave loop and we put it on four different pieces of, of you know, those military mass. And that doesn't take too long to do either. So we, we've got a number of options and, and you know, it, it requires a little bit of thought up front, a little team building exercise as to what's our optimum design. But yeah, I'm looking forward to next year when we can put this on a, a performing tri-band beam, I think we'll be very, very happy with the results. And again, we had uh, six antennas, but we only had four operating stations. So we had more antennas than we had radios. And yeah, but you've also got issues with band characteristics too. I mean, one rig can certainly work different bands on different times of day. So the fact we had six antennas is not a it's, it's not a deal breaker. It's 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 a nice utility. Well, the downside was it got windy, so our 15 meter antenna and our 80 meter antenna ended up having problems because they were we were trying to solo install them, and uh, the wind wind messed up both of them actually. So did it have almost, any impact on the beam? The the beam was falling over. I think you you saw that when you were there. And Ken Cooley jumped into. To help Ken. No, uh, I mean on the, on the tri-band beam. Did the wind affect the tri-band beam? No, no, we we had the struts on and everything was fine. The uh, the parts of the beam that didn't work is everything that was uh, from trap out was not was not working correctly. I don't know why. Yeah, I understand that. And actually, I figured out how we could go about figuring out what the problem is, but well, we didn't have enough time to to debug it. Right, so scrapped it. We can fix it. It's just going to take some effort. I don't know what's wrong with that thing. We used a spider pole for another inverted uh, 40 meter for the, uh, the phone. And so, and it had some wind issues too, but we, we were successful in getting up sort of, it's not as high as I would have liked it. Got some better ideas to try it again by tie wrapping it on the way up next, next year, if we use it and uh, it'll be more successful. And the same with the 80 meter antenna, need more than one person trying to do it all. Well, you know, a full wave loop on 80 is a lot of wire. Yeah. I think we'd have been better off with an inverted V approach to 80. The, the wind, uh, with, with only one person trying to, to uh, get all the ends correct, the wind was twisting too much and I couldn't oh, yeah, try to do it myself. It was just, I couldn't get it right. Yeah. I, I, it, I, again, I think uh, an inverted V may make that a much easier task. 
Well, I have so some ideas. Half as long. What's that? I have some ideas on how to make it work. And that if with two people, you could probably make it successful and, uh, and make it in, instead of a, 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 an upside down delta, make it a, um, a rectangle loop. So you have both ends tied down. It won't twist on the ends like it did, even in the wind. Even in the wind. Question. Yes. The 20 meters, was that the one that had looked like it had uh, PVC spreaders? Yes, yes. Yeah. Would that, uh, could you do that kind of a thing with the corners of the delta? Do short spreaders to just keep the corners stable? To do the well, delta? Well, on 80 on meters, eight? each, cor each corner would be 66 feet long. No, I'm just meaning just short spreaders to keep it to, so it doesn't start twisting. If you just keep the corners stable, the rest of it would be spread out okay. I'm not familiar with what it looked like when it was up. So I can't. The idea that next year, if we did it, is that um, we would tie the the, bow, the lower two corners down before we raised it up into the trees and it won't twist because you'll have two, two points on the ground keeping it stable and the two lines that you're bringing up on either end to make it a full rectangle uh, won't be twisting because they have the pivot points are now fixed. They're not spinning oh, okay. um, so unguided. Have so much room for it to, okay. Well, Tom, with, with all of these antennas, what makes them function the best is when the current node is at the highest point in the antenna. So with a loop, that's typically where the feed point is. You want that as high as you can get it. I tried. I, I don't quite understand what you're trying to tell me about Time went in down. We'll have to look at it. I don't. I don't yeah. understand. All right. Uh, any other comments? Anybody uh, have have fun and and want to do it again? And yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, Thank sign you. me up. I'm yeah. there next year. Yeah. We'll take good care you. of you, Bill. We like your performance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've got cool. a high bar to. Uh, I was I was shooting for 300 uh, contacts, but. Uh, uh, one of the uh, the young hams that uh, got his license at the last uh, Elks um, uh, testing session was there with his mom, and I spent a good couple hours uh, talking to him and his mom and getting uh, getting him some information. And he did actually get on the air with his brother. They were over at um, uh, yeah. yes, they were at Bob's station. So that was he, he and his brother. Um, uh, they got on i guess they spent quite a bit of time on the air so that was a lot of fun and then uh he he wanted to learn uh, cw and then there was another gentleman i can't remember his name but uh, we spent a couple hours during the middle of the night on 40 doing cw uh he wanted to learn it and he 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 got it down he was making contact so um uh, i was hoping for 300 but uh we'll try for that next year well, again, job well done. I thank you. I a lot of fun. How well you did. Yeah, Bill was. Uh, did you have good support? Was there a person helping you with logging as you were operating? No, I did all of that myself. My, my little uh, Windows tablet. I've got it set up to do the automatic function keys for sending. Uh, very little do I have to touch the paddle, so it's actually it'd be a hindrance for me to have uh, a logger. Uh, mm -hmm. as far as, as that is concerned, since most of it is going to be, at least the sending part of it is uh, mostly automated. Very nice. Yeah, I remember I operated CW at the field day site a number of years ago. And uh, there was this uh, fellow that came in, uh, sat down, he said he wanted to help me log. And uh, he was, he asked me, uh, where's your decoder? And I pointed up to my head and his job. <laughs> Oh yeah. That's so he thought he could. He didn't realize he had to copy the CW in order to log it. I had to tell him what to put down in the log because he he couldn't copy in his head. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Let me take notes in French. Do you know French? <laughs> you know, I, I have just one question. Does anyone want to build themselves a triplex? I would say that would be the next uh, kid building no, project. <laughs> Yeah, Phil. I guess not. Well, well that would be for a single. Radio project. 
Yeah, that would be a single operator three radio station. Uh, <laughs> somebody wants to operate three radios at the same time off one antenna. That would be a contest station, you know? Yeah, I would think there are clubs in the area that would love, love to have what you have, uh, mm -hmm. Phil. So um, there are clubs that would like such a thing and they did, did not use it for their field day. Yeah. I was excited about the number of guests that did turn out. I thought that we, was that's great. Yeah, that that's, was, that's better than what uh, Mike was saying about W6SFM. And they, they had some publicity to drag in some folks. So, yeah. uh, I did hear about the um, the um, Sierra Foothills and, and they had a large number from Jojo's uh, letter. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. It'd be interesting to, they're having their meeting on Friday. I'd like to hear more about how they, they announce uh, their club location and, and how they got the people to turn it up. That was cool. I was excited to have Jay Ballinger show up. Yeah, that was nice of him. He's a nice guy. Well, he's, it's his wedding anniversary that weekend. So he did talk to his XYL and, and coordinate that uh, as an area, some emergency coordinator, he did show up at our, and helped out. And uh, I put him to work too. So that was fun. Yeah, he's a nice yeah. guy. While I'm, while I'm thinking about nice guys, uh, several things. One, there was a gentleman named Mark that is works on, on the grounds there at the VFW who went out of his way to make sure that we had the lights and the fan on, even to getting a ladder and, and going up and turn, manually turning one of the fans on. So he got kudos from those of us who were there who were aware of it and uh, or needs them. And uh, since... There's been mention of the uh, badges. Uh, I've heard people say, I couldn't find my badge or whatever. Anybody and everybody that would like to have a badge or would like a new badge because it's a little different format on the logo. Uh, if you notice on the website, there's a gold one off to the right. Those. Uh, I'm more than happy to make enough badges for everybody because I got the plastic and I got paper and I got ink. So if you want a new a new badge with the new logo, just get get on the website, fill out the form so that all of your information is current and uh, your interests, that sort of thing. And I will be happy to print up a bunch of uh, badges and make them available at the next meeting that we can attend. So. Does it make sense? Makes sense. Well, I think everybody that did attend, it was a success in my in my view. Uh, I'm sure everybody was tired at the end, and I was too. But it uh, was worth doing. It worked. And by the way, golf on Sunday turned out pretty well. <laughs> you want some money? Ask Bob Mix. Where is Bob? <laughs> did you get to try out your ball retriever? No, I don't have one. You didn't get that? We did retrieve an errant I, tennis ball, Phil. So uh, you lost a tennis ball in the tree, and we, we did get it down, but I'm not sure you got it back to me. All right, any other questions? I think that I had. Well, fun. yeah, I do have a question. Uh, what are the prospects for us having meetings in person again? And uh, what is the program going to be for next uh, month's meeting? Well, next month's meeting is Marty. Zen and the art of an antenna repair. Is that quite right? Are you with us, Marty? Yeah, I just had to find my unmute button. <laughs> well, Phil Nix, the antenna part. So it's Zen and the art of reconstruction. Oh, we'll, we'll just give a, a little teaser. It's going to be about antenna reconstruction. Perfect. That answers that. As far as the meeting is concerned, I've still heard nothing from Sacramento area sewer about use of that meeting hall. So that's a big question mark. We could all meet in the parking lot of the Fair Oaks Library. We could have Jehovah Witnesses come in attendance too. We could talk about audit trail. Okay, well, I think we words, plan the, the next one to be remote, but uh, we, we have a, another month after that, maybe we'll hear something. Yeah, that's gonna be good for the uh, 
but a white elephant sale definitely we should have a venue and then uh, it'd be really nice for the home brew night white elephant sale can be out in front on our driveway in front of our garage if push comes to shove we have quite a bit of stuff we can uh, <laughs> donate well, you've got about 10 years of white elephant purchases in your garage, if I'm not mistaken. I know. We need to recycle. <laughs> so back to you, Kevin. All right. Thanks, Tom. Well, thanks for being Phil, K Phil Day captain this year. And I know it's a lot of work. So thanks for getting it all set up and doing the hard work for us. And thanks for everyone who pitched in and made it work. Sound like it was a good event. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person, but hopefully next year. Next year should be good. All right. Does anyone else have anything else they'd like to add? Any other news updates? Tell us about anything you're working on. Any other questions? Has anybody has anybody, has anybody started on their uh, QRP want meter yet? Pretty quiet. <laughs> 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 Actually, uh, Hiroki said yeah, he got all his surface mount stuff installed. Right. Ooh. He's in Iceland right now on a cruise. <laughs> Working on his kit on the ship? No. <laughs> He's operating. That's a, that's a, that's a one way trip to divorce. Mm hmm. Isn't there an ARRL cruise? I have no idea. Yeah, cruises are still controversial with the COVID and the, the different um, version of the virus breaking out right now. A variant. <laughs> I'd be a little hesitant to, to go on one of those right now. Yeah, it's pretty point. scary, isn't it? Uh, but uh, see everybody on the net uh, tomorrow, 8 p.m., 145.25. Sounds good. All right. Anything else before we wrap up? Thank you all for joining us. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. All right. Good night. Thanks. Bye. Good night. Good night.